All right, so we've got here some starting off some energy definitions. Uh, we're going to look at work to begin with. So hopefully you kind of have an idea of what energy is. It's the potential to do something that, uh, you know, an object that has energy can have an effect on the objects around it. Um, and work is the way that that energy is transferred from one object to another. When we transfer mechanical energy, which is energy associated with movement or the positioning of objects or systems of objects. And so with work, this is how we can transfer energy from one object to another object. We say that we do work on an object when we put energy into it and that that object does work on us when it's putting energy into us or we're taking energy out of it. Um, you can also call that doing negative work on an object, but it's a little strange to say it that way, but it's a perfectly valid statement. So this big thing about work is equal to the force that's parallel along the direction it's moving times the distance that it's moved through. So for example, if we move this block this direction along this path from here to here with a force applied at this angle, this would be our applied force on it. That would go here as a force. But we only want the parallel component, the component of that force that is parallel To the direction of motion. So we can find that here and it happens to be the cosine of f cosine theta would be equal to the parallel component. So that's why we have this equation here f d cosine theta. Uh, we'll see some more sophisticated ways of doing this especially if your path curves or changes directions it gets a little more complicated. That's something you wouldn't have seen probably before this class that we'll get to when we get to the full forces unit later this year. Or sorry the full energy unit later this year couple things. So we said that work is putting energy into or taking energy out of a system. So work is equal to the change in energy. And in this case, uh, we would be putting energy into the system because we're pushing the general same direction it's moving. If you were pushing generally the opposite direction something's moving, you'd be taking energy out of the system, slowing it down, changing its kinetic energy. Talking about kinetic energy, we have an expression for kinetic energy. In this class, we use capital letter K to uh, signify kinetic energy. And the equation is 1 half mv squared. One thing to note, this, since this is a vector being squared, uh, you actually have a magnitude involved in this. Because when you square a vector, uh, the direction winds up becoming irrelevant. And so uh, we just get this as a scalar. It doesn't have a direction. Energy doesn't have a direction other than, I guess, flowing into or out of a system. But it doesn't have, you know, it's not like to the right or to the left, the direction it's moving. That's not part of this definition. And so if we think about just the kinetic energy for a single individual object, that's all it has. It just has kinetic energy. I mean, there's like thermal energy and things, but the only kind of mechanical energy that a single object can have is kinetic energy. So if we do work on an object, it's going to change its kinetic energy if we do work on that specific object. And so we rewrite this energy just to look at only the kinetic energy in an object. It's final minus initial kinetic energy would be equal to the work. And so this is sort of our definition. This is sometimes called the work energy theorem, where we talk about the relationship between both of these. So that was for individual objects. But when we start to talk about systems of objects, not only does each individual object have a kinetic energy, but the system as a whole can have potential energy. And potential energy has to do with the position and relative location of different objects. We have gravitational potential energy, spring potential energy, there's chemical potential energy as well. And so I guess that's something that an individual object could have, but really then you start talking about the system, you know, we'll not get into it. Uh, all of these different kinds. So we're going to talk about a couple of those. And in this class, we're going to use the capital letter U for potential energy. Uh, the reason why is because Potential energy starts with a capital U. Gravitational potential energy is equal to mgh. M is the mass of the object. G is, sorry, the M is the mass of the object that is not the Earth. Uh, G is the gravitational field strength of the Earth. On the surface of the Earth, it's 9.8 meters per second squared, or in this case, it's actually 9.8 newtons per kilogram squared. That's the same unit. It comes out to be the same thing. And then height, that's the distance above some arbitrary reference point that it is. So this is a relative measurement 
Uh, this is only works when you're close to the surface of the Earth. And the, even though it seems like this is that this marker, when I hold it here above the ground, it has potential energy, that's not really the case. What is happening is I have a system of objects, and those the system is the marker and Mother Earth. So these two together are my system, and together they have gravitational potential energy. It might seem like a trivial distinction, but it actually is a pretty important distinction. Um, so thinking about this idea of systems. Now, another one we might have is in a system, you might have a spring as one of the objects. And if you have a spring in your system, or a spring connecting some objects in your system, then you can use this equation to talk about how much energy is stored in the spring, and in the spring's compression or stretched outness. And so here we've got one half, that's uh, equal to one half. We've got K, that's equal to the spring constant of the spring, that's a physical constant of the spring, the entire spring as it is. Um, and that's in units of newtons per meter. It's how much force is required to squish it by one meter or stretch it by one meter. And then times delta X squared. Uh, and in this case, delta X, that's how much, if you just set the spring on the ground, just let it be on its own, where it would be, it, that's how much you've changed it, delta X, how much its length has changed. So either by stretching it or squishing it, you get some sort of change in this case. You just plug it in, that calculates those for you. The last thing I want to talk about is the conservation of energy. But that'll be in a different video.